How you doing everybody? Today we're going to take a look at Sing Street, a semi-autobiographical movie written and directed by John Carney. This movie takes place in Dublin in the year 1985 and it's all about a 15-year-old boy named Connor. Connor's family is going through some financial trouble, like many Irish families at the time, and on top of that his parents are constantly arguing with each other and probably well on their way to a divorce. And as if his home life wasn't messy enough, Connor also has to attend a new school because his family can no longer afford private school tuition. So he starts attending the Christian Brothers Academy on Sing Street. And while he's at his new school, he meets a mysterious and pretty girl named Rafina. And to impress this girl, he tells her he's in a band and they're shooting a music video and hey, you want to be in our video? And when she says yes, he immediately goes to his best friend and informs him that it is vitally important that they start a band as soon as possible. And they join up with some other guys at the school and form a band called Sing Street. Kind of like the street their school is on, except spelled differently. S-I-N-G instead of S-Y-N-G-E. It's a pun. And hilarity and music and occasionally musical hilarity ensue. So I went into this movie completely cold. I hadn't seen the trailer, hadn't read any promotional materials. I knew nothing about this movie at all, except that for whatever reason, everyone who had seen this movie seemed to like it. So the movie starts off, I see it's set in Ireland in the 1980s, and there's this boy and his parents are having troubles and he's attending a new school. Yes, yes, seen this kind of story before. And then Motorhead starts playing. Hmm. Okay, movie, you have my attention. And in addition to having an awesome soundtrack, this movie turned out to be a very funny and charming coming-of-age story and a wonderful flashback to the 1980s. Connor, or Cosmo as he is later known in the film, because if you're going to be the leader of a band, you have to have a fancy name, but Connor is a very likable kid, and really that's true for all the kids in this movie, except the bully, but... You're not supposed to like the bully. And he is exposed to music through his brother, Brendan, who kind of acts as his mentor throughout the movie. And I really like the relationship between those two. Brendan is constantly giving him feedback on his brother's recordings and introducing him to new music through his vast collection. He also occasionally gives him advice on his relationship with Rafina, which leads to one of the funnier moments in the movie. Uh, there's a moment where Connor is telling him that he thinks Rafina already has a boyfriend because there's this guy that picked her up in front of her house. He has his own car and he was blasting this music and Brendan stops him and says, wait, what was he listening to? And Connor says, Genesis. Brendan says, he will not be a problem. No woman can ever truly love a man who listens to Phil Collins. That may be one of the greatest movie lines ever. Brendan was definitely a fun guy, although the actor had to wear a terrible wig. And I just, I don't know what they were thinking. If I have anything negative to say about this movie, that wig, oh, that had to go. The other kids in the band are also a lot of fun. It starts out with just Connor and his friend Darren, who doesn't actually play in the band. He just acts as their wannabe manager of sorts. And then they meet this kid, Eamon, who conveniently has a large collection of musical instruments and can play them all flawlessly. The kid is very quiet and reserved, but a musical genius. He and Connor become co-writers of the band's music, and I really like the bond that forms between those two. Really, it's Eamon and Brendan that keep Connor going throughout the movie. Brendan acts as his inspiration, and Eamon helps him put that inspiration to music. And they fill out the band with a few more kids from their school, including the school's token black kid, which leads to a very funny scene where they first meet the guy, because Connor's friend Darren has never seen a black person before. He has no idea what to do with this guy, and the first time they meet, he starts speaking to him very slowly. Like, you ever known someone who, when they meet someone who doesn't speak English, they try to communicate by just speaking English very slowly because they think that somehow speaking slowly will make them magically understand another language? That's exactly what he does the first time they try talking to this kid. And finally, he just says, what's this guy's problem? Wait, you speak English? I've lived here my entire life. Yes, I speak English. <laughs> God, I love that scene. 
It was a lot of fun watching the stylistic evolution of Connor and also his fellow bandmates and the different hairstyles and wardrobes and makeup styles they went through because it was the 80s and everyone wore makeup back then, even the men. And there was nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it gets downright hilarious. I swear the band Sing Street almost looks like this cross between The Cure and The Village People. It is absolutely hilarious. And it's also kind of neat to see the different musical styles they try to emulate as Brendan keeps feeding his brother Connor these different albums like Duran Duran and The Cure and Hall and & Oates. And speaking of the music, it is surprisingly good, which is probably the most unrealistic thing about this movie because no middle school garage band ever produced music this good. Ever. It just does not happen. Then again, nobody wants to pay money to see a movie about a bunch of kids making crappy music, so you gotta compromise somewhere. But seriously, the music is really good. There's one song from this movie called Drive It Like You Stole It that I still have stuck in my head, which is not very good when I'm trying to sleep. I'm like, brain, it's two in the morning. Can we please just go to sleep now? My brain's like, I'm sorry, can't hear you. The music's too loud. Drive it like you stole it. Ah, shut up already. I want to sleep. But seriously, it's good. The cast all did a pretty good job, and even if you're not Irish, there are a few people in here you'll probably recognize. The father is played by Aidan Gillen, who of course is Littlefinger on Game of Thrones. The mother is Maria Doyle Kennedy, who played Jupiter's mom in Jupiter Ascending. And big brother Brendan is played by Jack Rayner. And the entire time I'm watching this movie, I'm thinking, I know this guy. I have seen him before, but I just could not place it. It wasn't until I got home and looked him up, I realized, oh... He was the creepy boyfriend in Transformers Age of Extinction. So basically, he and Maria both need to get better agents because they clearly deserve better than the movies they've ended up in. The kids also did a really good job. I liked Ferdia walsh Pilo and Lucy Boynton, who played Connor and Rafina respectively, worked really well together. Overall, it's a very charming movie. I had a lot of fun with it. And it's nice to see a movie about teenagers that isn't all angst and drama and actually takes a lighthearted look at adolescence. And I would definitely recommend checking this one out, but this is still in a very limited release in this country. So finding a theater that's playing it may be a little tricky. If you can find one, I definitely recommend giving this one a watch. If not, you might have to wait until the DVD comes out, but one way or another, you should see it. And in the meantime, check out the soundtrack. It's really good. And I think that's all I have to say about Sing Street. So until next time, take care.